The term ghost town first appeared in a newspaper article in 1894. Some attribute the word to the boom and bust of gold mining towns in California. The mere use of the word ghost tells me that even from the beginning of a town's abandonment, people noticed the energy shift from the living to the dead. That haunting energy remains in ghost towns. Some may say that it grows in the quiet solitude while decades pass without a living soul possessing its land. Once upon a time, the town of Belfont, Alabama thrived, but then it died, and its dead are all who remain. I'm Vanessa K. Eccles, and this is Fabled. Lydia's fingers trembled slightly as she adjusted the knobs on her tripod the metallic scrape mingling with the whisper of leaves in the encroaching gloom. The abandoned Belfont Cemetery lay before her, a tableau of decay shrouded in the lavender hues of dusk. She clicked her camera onto its perch with a definitive snap, ready to capture the forlorn beauty of this desolate place. The air was cool carrying the musk of damp earth and forgotten stories. Lydia's heart beat with an artist's passion as she framed her first shot, the lens of her camera focusing on a weathered headstone, its inscription all but devoured by time's relentless maw. With a gentle press of her finger, she captured the image the soft click echoing faintly against the stone sentinels that stood guard around her. Venturing deeper into the cemetery, she wove between the markers of the deceased, her boots sinking into the lush carpet of grass that had claimed the land as its own. The tall strands caressed her thighs, leaving dewy kisses on her jeans as she sought the perfect composition among the chaos of nature, reclaiming what once was ordered. Lydia's gaze fell upon a cluster of gravestones huddled together like children, afraid of the dark. They leaned at odd angles, their surfaces marred with the scars of neglect. She crouched low, the viewfinder framing the stones in an eerie dance with the shadows. The soft rustle of foliage behind her went unnoticed as she lost herself in the pursuit of her art, the shutter fluttering like the wing of a trapped moth as it immortalized the scene before her. There was a beauty here in the embrace of decay, a silent narrative that begged to be told through the aperture of her lens. Lydia felt it in her bones, a connection to the souls commemorated beneath her feet, each photo a tribute to their whispered legacies. She moved with purposeful grace, a specter among the tombstones, her presence a mere footnote in the chronicle of the Belfont Cemetery. The sun dipped below the horizon, a lingering kiss of light on the oldest headstones. Lydia, entranced by the viewfinder's world, took no notice as the sky bled into twilight. Her finger danced upon the shutter release, capturing the descent into evening with each click and whir of her camera. The cemetery, once cloaked in the golden hues of sunset, now wore this silent, 
somber shades of night. A chill crept through the air, its fingers ghosting along Lydia's spine, but her focus remained unbroken. Shadows stretched across the ground, reaching for her like the hands of the long-forgotten dead. The trees whispered secrets in a language known only to the wind, their leaves rustling a haunting melody that melded with the quiet clicks of her camera. Her breath materialized before her in wispy tendrils, mingling with the mist that rose from the cold earth. It was the hour when day succumbed to the embrace of night, and with it, an otherworldly veil descended upon the cemetery. Lydia stepped deeper into the heart of the Belfont Cemetery, her eyes wide with the thrill of the perfect shot. She adjusted the settings on her camera, coaxing more light into the lens, desperate to capture the essence of the nocturnal gloom. The darkness did not deter her. Instead, it beckoned, promising a glimpse into an unseen realm. Beautiful, she murmured, reviewing a photo of a marble angel whose outstretched wings now seemed to shelter the encroaching darkness. Oblivious to the subtle shift in the atmosphere, Lydia's ambition drove her onward. The night was alive with possibilities, the spectral audience just beyond the curtain of visibility. She would harness this haunted hour, frame it within the confines of her photographs. Night reveals what daylight hides, she thought adjusting her tripod for a wider angle. But there in the periphery of her awareness, something lingered, a presence that had been watching, waiting. It hovered at the edge of perception, patient and intangible, as if the cemetery itself had awoken with a watchful gaze fixed upon Lydia. Unseen, the supernatural sentinels of Belfont stood guard over their eternal rest, witnessing the intrusion of the living amongst the silence of the dead. Lydia's boots snagged on an unseen vine, a sinewy tendril of the cemetery's overgrowth that clung to her like a remnant of the past refusing to be forgotten. With a sharp gasp, her body lurched forward, and she felt the unsettling grip of the earth as if something beneath had reached up with skeletal fingers. Her camera, her trusted companion in this dance with shadows, slipped from her grasp and crashed into the dirt, the sound a harsh exclamation in the hush of the night. Damn, she cursed under her breath the echo of her voice feeling out of place among the whispering leaves and sighs of the ancient headstones. For a transient heartbeat, Lydia's pulse hammered in her ears, and she could almost believe in the macabre tales that haunted the old Belfont grounds. Her imagination conjured images of decayed hands bursting through the soul, yearning for the warmth of life they could no longer possess. The chill of fear kissed a cold path down her spine, but she squashed the ludicrous thought as quickly as they came. Get up, Lydia, she muttered, shaking her head to dislodge the eerie fantasy. It was merely the clutch of the earth, nothing more. No ghostly hand sought her amongst the living. With trembling hands, she retrieved her camera cradling it close to check for damage. A few scuffs marred its surface, a testament to its sudden meeting with mortality, but it seemed operational. A small mercy in the enveloping gloom. Focus, she breathed, reasserting control. Lydia straightened, dusting herself off, and peered through the viewfinder once more. Shadows danced at the edge of her vision, playing tricks on her mind. But she was here for a purpose, 
to capture the unseen, to frame the essence of this haunting place. And so, with a steadying breath, she pressed on, deeper into the graveyard's embrace, where the stones stood, and the night whispered secrets meant only for the brave. Lydia's breath formed a ghostly wisp in the chilling air as she panned her camera across the derelict landscape of weathered stones and encroaching shadows. The sky, once painted with the soft hues of dusk, now surrendered to the deep blues and grays of nightfall. Her fingers danced with practiced ease over the settings, adjusting for the perfect shot. Then it happened. A blur darted across the camera's display. Lydia froze, her heart hammering against her ribs. She squinted at the screen, disbelieving. A ghostly figure, a man wearing a hat, sprinted from one headstone to another with impossible speed. His movements were fluid, a dance with death that defied the natural laws she knew well. A shiver snaked up her spine, icy tendrils wrapping around her bones. This was it, the moment her passion for the paranormal might finally bear fruit. With an urgency fueled by both fear and fascination, Lydia fumbled for the record button, her finger landing on it with a decisive click. Stay, she whispered to the phantom as though it could hear her plea. Her other hand reached into the pocket of her jacket, retrieving her phone with swift intent. She would not let this encounter slip through her fingers, like the mist that curled around the gravestones. No. Her eyes darted between the camera's viewfinder and the phone's illuminated screen, hoping to capture any further glimpse of the mysterious specter. Every sense heightened, Lydia waited the cold air teasing her skin, and the silence of the cemetery engulfing her, a silent audience to a scene unfolding beyond the veil. Phone in hand, Lydia edged forward, her gaze glued to the glowing screen of her phone. The apparition, a mere smudge in the moonlit cemetery, sharpened into view on the digital display. A man, cloaked in shadows, his hat a stark silhouette against the graying sky. Her breath caught as she stepped closer, the world around her fading until nothing existed outside of the haunting figure and her desperate need to understand. Maxwell, a voice whispered, so faint, Lydia thought it might be the wind playing tricks on her ears. But then it came again, clearer this time, a spectral echo that made the hairs on her arms stand. I am Maxwell. She halted, her heart pounding in her chest. The graveyard silent seemed to lean in, listening. Slowly, she lifted her eyes from her phone to the tombstone the apparition pointed towards. Etched in weathered stone, the name Maxwell stood out, accompanied by dates and words that spoke of love and loss, a beloved husband, a cherished father. Maxwell, she repeated, her voice barely above a whisper, half afraid that speaking louder would break the fragile connection. She could see him now, only through her phone. The cemetery, through her own eyes, lay empty and still. It was as if the device served as a portal to the world where spirits lingered, and she, for a moment, held the key. The whispering returned, a mournful melody that seemed to resonate with the very air around her. It was an invocation of memories long past, a plea from a soul anchored to the realm of the living by unseen chains. Lydia's fingers tightened around her phone the weight of Maxwell's gaze, as intangible as it was intense, bearing down upon her. Lydia's breath formed a ghostly mist in the chilly air as she peered at the adjacent grave, the inscription Elizabeth catching her eye. The date of birth mirrored her own, creating an unexpected bridge across time. I'm sorry, Maxwell, 
she murmured, her voice laced with genuine remorse for the spectral figure whose life had been cut so short. Elizabeth was his wife. Sorry for this quiet world you're bound to, she continued, a lump forming in her throat. She imagined Elizabeth, perhaps once fabric and full of dreams now eternally resting beneath the crumbling stone. Elizabeth had died well before Maxwell. A sudden coldness brushed against her cheek, like the caress of winter's breath, forming goosebumps along her skin. Maxwell's whisper crept into her ear, a soft voice that made the shadows around her seem to stretch and converge. Thank you, he seemed to say, though no one was there, his ethereal hand appearing to reach out towards her face only through the camera screen. She held her breath, the moment hanging between them her finger trembling over the record button. With a click, the camera captured the impossible, the tender yet chilling gesture from a man caught between worlds. The image on the screen flickered with the ghostly touch, a dance of light and shadow that would forever imprint the encounter. Under the gaze of moonlight, Lydia felt the veil between life and death thinning, Maxwell's presence a whisper away from reality. The chill of the night wrapped itself around Lydia like a shroud as she backed away from the ghostly image on her camera screen. Her foot caught on something hard and unyielding, a rock half buried beneath the earth. She stumbled, arms flailing for balance that eluded her, and with a sharp gasp found herself tumbling to the ground. Lydia's fall seemed to break the spell Maxwell's presence had cast. The grass, damp and cool against her cheek, became an anchor back to the tangible world. Her heart hammered against her ribcage, drumming out a rapid rhythm of fear and adrenaline. Scrambling to her feet, Lydia didn't dare look back at the spot where Maxwell's apparition had been. Instead, her hands shook as she reached for her camera, still perched atop its tripod, a silent witness to the unearthly encounter. The red recording light blinked steadily, oblivious to the chaos. With a strength born of panic, she hoisted the equipment onto her shoulder, not bothering to check if it was secure. Every shadow seemed to pulse with unseen danger. Every whisper of wind a ghostly call. Lydia ran. The tall grass whipped at her legs, vines clawed at her ankles, as if the cemetery itself conspired to keep her there, among the forgotten graves and lingering spirits. But fear lent her speed, transforming her sprint into a desperate escape from the haunting embrace of Belfont Cemetery. Her breath came out in ragged sobs, the cold air stinging her throat as the safety of her car loomed ahead, a beacon in the encroaching darkness. With each step, the distance between her and Maxwell's ghost grew, until finally the metal door of her vehicle slammed shut behind her, sealing her away from the night's eerie clutches. The silence of Lydia's home was a stark contrast to the whispering winds of Belfont Cemetery. She set the camera down on her worn oak table, the wood groaning under its weight, as if complaining about the presence of something unnatural. Her fingers trembled like autumn leaves in a gale as she fumbled to stop the recording. The camera had remained on all this time. The footage flickered onto the screen, a warrior into a world of shadows and whispers. Lydia leaned forward, her gaze locked onto the images playing back at her. Each frame, a step back through her memory, the camera's unblinking perspective revealed the undulating grasses and headstones shrouded in twilight's embrace. As the playback reached that faded moment, Lydia saw that it had caught everything. Her and the ghost, and Maxwell's hand reaching her cheek. And then there, just as she had clambered into her car, the camera caught something or someone in its peripheral vision. A figure, 
barely discernible yet unmistakably human, stood beside her car as if he were trying to edge in. Maxwell, his form hazy as morning mist, but with an undeniable solidity that sent a cold shiver racing along Lydia's spine. She paused the video, heart pounding against her chest, like a caged bird desperate to escape. The image of Maxwell lingered on the screen, a spectral stowaway who had silently climbed a seat into her world. It was an intrusion that could not be ignored, a haunting gaze reaching out from beyond the grave, tethering her to the ghostly echoes of Belfont Cemetery. Lydia's pulse quickened as Maxwell's image clung to the pause screen, a ghastly passenger on her journey from the cemetery. Her fingertips grazed the cool glass of the wine she had poured earlier, a feeble attempt at normalcy after her harrowing visit. With a suddenness that snatched her breath, the wine glass twitched, its stem performing a macabre dance upon the wooden table. The room seemed to constrict around her, shadows stretching like grasping fingers towards the trembling vessel. Lydia watched, frozen, as it slid an inch, then another, its movement silent but screaming in the stillness of her home. A visible tremor ran down her spine, the dread within her blooming, like a dark flower in the pit of her stomach. Shaking, she pulled out her phone and hit the camera icon. And there, amidst the terror of animate glass and creeping darkness, Maxwell's image twisted into a smile that chilled her to the core. He was in her room. And he wore a smile that knew secrets, that whispered of forbidden knowledge and the loneliness of the grave. It was a smile that should not exist. Yet there it was, imprinted on the digital canvas of her camera, reaching out from a realm unseen. A scream clawed its way up Lydia's throat, raw and primal, shattering the silence as the presence of Maxwell suffocated the air. The walls echoed with her terror. A symphony of fear played for an audience of one. Her heart thundered, each beat a drum of panic as the realization sunk in. The ghost of Belfont Cemetery had crossed the veil and now haunted the very fibers of her existence. Tears blurred her vision, her body instinctively recalling from the screen, from the phantom smile that had followed her home. Lydia stumbled backward, arms flailing for balance as the world tipped on its axis. The haunting had breached the sanctuary of her life, and with a final petrified cry, she succumbed to a darkness that promised no escape. The ghost town of Belfont lies in the northeastern part of Alabama. Settlers established Belfont in the early 19th century, officially incorporated on December 15th 1821. Nearly 200 residents called it home. The word Belfont means beautiful fount in French. Belfont served as the Jackson County seat until 1868 when they moved it to Scottsboro. In the 1820s and 30s, the people built a church, courthouse, and post office to cement Belfont in the landscape and provide the essentials that every town of that era needed. A place to worship, a place to conduct the law, and a means to communicate with the greater world. By 1844, Belfont had doubled its residents. But like so many other southern towns, the Civil War would have devastating consequences, leaving this once blooming town to die a slow and agonizing death. With much of the town burned, there was little to hold on to. 
By 1859, the post office closed, and by 1868, when the county seat moved, many of the remaining businesses and people had moved also. Its population rapidly shrank, dropping entirely off the census rolls by 1880. By the 1920s, everyone had wholly abandoned the town. Today, all that remains of Belfont is its cemetery and a lone chimney from the local inn. It's almost as if the town never existed, yet its ghosts still remain. My cousin's wife, Denise, was the first person to tell me about Belfont's story. She was visiting family and decided to stop at the Belfont Cemetery to see what remained. It too seems to have been mostly abandoned. If you'd like to see images that she took, be sure to check them out on my website or social media. She was kind enough to get photos for us. Thank you, Denise. The weeds and earth are slowly swallowing the gravestones and their silent keepers. It's nearly impossible to walk through anymore, at least at the time of her taking the photos. There's an irony that's almost poetic in that all that remains of the ghost town of Belfont is its dead. In 2006, the Belfont Cemetery was included in the Alabama Historic Cemetery Register. It sits on high ground, which was believed to bring souls closer to heaven and of course help prevent the land from flooding or other natural disasters. Many of the headstones have suffered damage from nature and vandals over the years. The earliest marker is from 1826, almost 200 years old. People have often claimed to experience an eerie feeling when visiting the cemetery, especially after dark. Some have even claimed to see apparitions or have the sensation of being watched. Maybe it's true that dead towns now belong to their ghosts. There's something about an abandoned place that pulls at the heart, ringing in almost creepy sadness that begs you to look and see it. But most of us are happy to move right along and let sleeping dogs lie. Some people, but not us, of course. We're the wanderers who aren't afraid of looking into the past, the dark, the truth. We're the ones who choose to remember to care, honor, and respect those who've gone on before us. We tell their stories. We see and remember you, Belfont. And to all the ghosts that still call it home, may you rest in peace. Fabled is produced by me, Vanessa K. Eccles, with music by Katie Coffrin. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to share, rate, and review. It really helps the podcast grow and keeps me continuing with the episodes. Until next time, thank you for listening. <laughs>